Good afternoon everyone, hope you're all well. Welcome to this video where I'm going to be discussing temporary recruitment and permanent recruitment. If you're starting an agency, I'm going to delve into what is easier to set up, which one is going to bring you more money, what one's more profitable, and in the long and short term, which is easier to sort of perform off. I'm going to show you why temporary is more cost, but also can sometimes bring you more revenue and sometimes less work. So. I'm a permanent recruiter 90% of the time. I have temporary contracts, I have temporary roles. I've also got a big one landing as well for a quite a large care home group. So I'm gonna be doing probably about a 40, 60 temp to perm split is how my desk and company is looking. So with regards to permanent recruitment, I'm gonna explain both very quickly and then I'm gonna get into the initial startup costs. Temporary is obviously a bit more and I'm gonna show you why there's a few challenges here and there. So with a permanent recruitment agency, what you do is you're just paid for the introduction. You're not paid for anything else. You're not paid to do any background checks. You're not paid to have that worker on, you know, a certain period. You just get one lump sum fee. You don't need any insurance because you're not hiring that employee. When you're a temporary recruiter, you're actually employing that person. Legally speaking, they become your employer and you lease them out to other companies to go and work, whether that's for a day, covering sickness, they could be, you know, over the course of three, four years even. Um, that's definitely not unheard of to have someone there or a bunch of people there. So with permanent recruitment, there is literally no setup cost. You don't need any insurance. Legally speaking, I would advise to get insurance um, in terms of indemnity insurance. But that's not a must to set up a business. All you need is a registered company, a business account, website, phone line. That's all you're going to need. Startup cost is going to be under 100 quid. And with permanent recruitment, you are working mainly off contingency. So you only get paid if that person successfully starts the job within a period after them starting, whatever your terms dictate. So you've got a payment term of 30 days, let's say. So they have to pay 30 days after they've started. And there is a refund rate with most contingency rep recruitment. It's usually 60 or 90 days. Sometimes if you've got done over when you negotiated, you can have a six month refund period. The longer it goes on, the less you have to get back. So in the first two weeks or month, you might have to give half back or all of it back in terms of the fee. So permanent recruitment works off of your annual salary. So the person's annual salary. So if it's 20% fee of 100K, you're gonna get 20 grand fee. If it's 10% of 30K, you're gonna get a 3,000 pound free. So it's off the person's annual salary, excluding bonuses. So you don't get on bonuses and you don't get on overtime or anything like that. So the fee is easy to work out. Um, I'll make another video on fees and why that is. So permanent recruitment, how much can you actually make in as a permanent recruiter? Um, that's, you know, it, it begs the question. Every industry is different. I think the fees range from anywhere from 1500 on the really low end so I don't know if you just got a, a care assistant or a cleaner and you just want them permanently, you can charge a really low fee because they're very easy to find. Um, if you've got a, let's say, uh, like I've got a position which is worth 15,000, that's a low fee. Um, actually that's, you know, fees like for a doctor or a clinical psychologist would be looking at, you know, fees of up to 30%. So you could be looking at 30 grand, um, 30, 40,000 pounds. For that specialist really really hard to find person that's always in demand you can be looking at fees like that it's unrealistic not to think you're gonna have those big fees associated with finding out of people so you could look to make you know as a sort of beginner inexperienced person you know you could actually i mean you probably perform better than most sort of experienced recruiters um because you've got to drive the passion and yeah you can probably make you know a few couple of couple of placements um per month um and that's if you build up a nice client base where they're all sending you jobs just give you an idea i got um a 50 grand job sent to me i'm recruiting for something else today and i've got two other positions for a client i've been recruiting for for about three months so i think i haven't done any business development today but i've still got job orders coming in and it's just naturally organically flowing in so just important build up your client base so temporary recruitment what we're going to talk about temporary recruitment you're going to need specific insurance for this the reason being you need employee liability insurance the cost of these depending on the sort of 
you know how much the cover you want to cost if it's 2 million 5 million 10 million 100 million all the costs are going to be slightly different so you're going to be looking at the major insurance you're going to need you know liability insurance public and you know public and employee and obviously professional indemnity insurance as well they're the three main ones you're going to have to have you're also going to have certain policies in place now unless you're working with a government body they're probably not going to ask you to send these sort of documents across like the modern slavery act um what else is there there's like fair pay and all that so you've got to have these sort of you know policies in place um just just for the sake of it i mean you can actually look at other agencies what they display on their their sort of website i think if you are actually doing temporary recruitment the biggest cost you're going to have is insurance and it's illegal to actually run a temporary agency without employee liability insurance the cost of it is going to be over a grand a year um, so that's a big startup cost and associated with that if you are doing positions where you're recruiting for schools hospitals people where there's vulnerable people children adults um, that are vulnerable you're going to have to dbs check so you're going to have to do a disclosure and bar and service background check the cost can be about 40 60 pounds depending on what type there's all different levels there's a little quick one and then there's a full service one which costs over 60 pounds so you are going to have to take that cost up front if there is long-term positions some companies expect you to train staff as well so it's not the case of hey look you're just going to send across you know people to go and work now so you won't have to dbs check let's say an, an engineer who's just going to be out there working by himself yeah there's no vulnerable people however there are ways around not getting insurance yeah um no sorry that's a mistake you're always going to have to have insurance however you're going to have to have an umbrella company who legally hires the the person so you won't actually have to do any direct you know you've got no legal obligation to that person and the umbrella company will advise you they will sort out of pay as well so temporary recruitment you're going to have to hire the person get there check that they can legally work in the country as well you're going to have to background check them for certain circumstances. You're going to have to get all their personal details. You have to be GDPR compliant with all of this as well. So it's not just a case of, oh, look, I'm a permanent recruiter. There's a fee. Or I'm a temporary recruiter. Yeah, I've got someone. Send them for a day. There's compliance. They become your employee. They have rights under you. You have to make sure holiday pay is paid. National insurance. You know, all these things have to be, you know, added up. Holiday pay, pension, national insurance has to be watertight this is what an umbrella company can help you with and guide you with i'm happy to guide you know if anyone's got any questions off of that so in terms of temporary recruitment it is not unheard of for somebody no joke to actually make a million pound a year off a temporary desk in certain industries and the beauty of temporary recruitment is you can earn a small fee off the hourly rate so i'll give you an example I charge a care assistant £2 on top of their wage. So the client pays me a £2 service fee, basically. Yeah, that's all profit. I'm not talking about what, what's in between and then the wages. I'm talking about all profit. So that's £2 profit per hour for that person. Um, and that's a very, I wouldn't say low skill, but we call them unqualified. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> unqualified staff members. So... Obviously, the more, you know, if it's a doctor or a nurse, you're going to be looking at, you know, five to 25, maybe more pounds per hour each time. So let's say that person works 40 hours per week. You're going to be earning 80 pounds off of that person for just sending them in after the compliance is done and they're working. If they work long term, actually, if you end up with 10 of those people, you end up making, you know, 60 grand per year, just rolling on. It doesn't always work like that. Realistically speaking, people leave. People get unhappy. They don't like where they work. So there is a lot of things to consider. However, if you've got a smooth running temp desk and on the flip side, instead of two pounds an hour, you could be getting 200 pounds per day. I've had contractors out um, on, in the finance industry that have been at a very sort of C-suite level and my profit was 250 pounds per day and they were there for six months. And unfortunately, that person probably would have been there longer, but they had a debt bereavement in their family and had to leave the country. So it's not unheard of if you've got two pounds, 50p an hour guys, and you've got a hundred of those out at the moment, you know, let's say warehouse workers, 
the cleaners, you know, catering staff for events. I mean, events are a bit dead foul, but if you've got 100 of those out, and even if you're making 50p, you're making 500 pounds a day. So temporary recruitment long term will make you much, much more money. Um, however, there's a initial startup cost. So what I would advise, start with a temporary desk. I mean, sorry, a permanent desk. Once you've got a permanent desk up and running, naturally a client will say, look, I need someone for three months. Yeah. Do you do temporary work? I get asked all the time. We need temporary cover. Do you do that as well? Or have you got anyone in your books that can come in Sunday? It just naturally happens. Once you've got a bit of cash flow coming in and you've set up a permanent desk, it's easier to get that relationship with a client. You'll also have candidates that have applied to your position, you've got in contact with in the past, that you know you can just say, hey, look, are you looking for extra hours? It's much easier. If you start with a temporary recruitment desk, it's much harder to sort of get running. It's highly lucrative long-term, but in the short term, you need to start with permanent to learn the process, get the cash flow in and reinvest, buy insurance, buy you know CRM systems, more advertisement, attract more people into you. And that's probably how I would run it. So temporary recruitment explained between, in a nutshell, you know, that's how it runs. I would definitely recommend if anyone's looking to start a recruitment agency, permanent is the way to go. Do not start with temporary unless you've got experience in the sector. So hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful. Give me, uh, I don't know, a thumbs up or something, man. Subscribe to the channel, whatever those people say. Take care.